guys. Uh, it's a quick look at the 3090 Kingpin. Um, you saw a little B-roll with the boxing, yeah. Um, the card itself, uh, matte black pretty much. You get the screen, folds up and down. You can mount it this way, or you can have it up. Uh, you have your probit connections. Uh, it does come with all the probit uh, connectors in the box. Uh, then you have three switches here. LN2, OC, normal. Uh, I don't remember the power limits off the top of my head. The only one that's important is the LN2, which is 520. Not exactly XOC wattage, but um, for daily, it's not bad, right? So other than that, uh, nice chunky MV-Link bridge uh, connector here, which shows you that if you were to water block this GPU, it would have this missing piece. Uh, that's if you're waiting for a block. I know Optimus is making one. Um, EK has no plans to make one. If they're gonna make one, it will be out August. Uh, I offered to send mine in, but the fact that it would take all the way to August next year, at the earliest, is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna go for that. But other than that, <coughs> I'll let, you know, maybe they'll get another one, they'll be able to put it on their timeline. Uh, you have dip switches on the back. Uh, it's probably hard to see, but, uh, you know, a core, memory, core again. I forgot what the third, fourth one is off my head. Uh, other than that, you know, standard kingpin affair. Uh, I would say in terms of clocks, if you're thinking that this card is especially binned, uh, don't, don't, they're not binned. Um, this one would do about 20, 40 game stable. For benches, I could probably push 27, 21, 75 on the 520. Uh, the fans that come on the AIO are total garbage. Um, they're like the cheapest fans you can ever get. And I know EVGA doesn't make amazing fans, but they have better fans than this. And when you spend $2,000, you should get better fans. This GPU has a $500 premium. So th let's just say this AIO is a hundred bucks, okay? Not even, right? Because it's got shit fans. And to be honest, these things, you know, they don't cost too much to make. They sell, you can buy an EVGA AIO all day long for a hundred bucks, right? So the card itself, you know, I mean, margins are there. So better fans would have been nice. I would say pro tip, if you just plan to run it like this, uh, change the fans, run the fans off a controller, uh, like your motherboard, just use a splitter. See, they're all, they're all just connected by PWM anyway. Use a splitter, that way you're not sucking juice out of your uh, 520 to power fans. Uh, the AIO does work pretty well. I kept it under like 50, 60C under load, under that. It's about 30C in my apartment, so it, it, not amazing, but not bad. Um, so other than that, I, to be honest, I'm just not too impressed, you know? Um, but I think that's kind of the direction that they're going with kingpins, right? So it used to be people who bought kingpins would put them on chillers, run them on LN2, and they would just sell the card, and they sell the card with just the air cooler, and then most people just took it apart the moment they got it. Uh, nowadays, they sell them on AIOs, right? Starting with last gen. And the reasoning for it was, oh, uh, they produce too much heat now, we need to sell on an AIO uh, to keep it cool. Mm, that's not so much the truth as more of your audience has changed. There's nothing wrong with buying this GPU just to use it as a casual and slap it in your machine and be done with it. But there is nothing better about this than say a Ford Win 3 hybrid or I don't know, just the XC3 hybrid if there is one. Uh, there's just a regular hybrid. There's no real benefit outside of the power limit, right? So you can flash this power limit on any three eight pin GPU. That's a 3090. So it could be a Strix, it could be a Trio, etc. Uh, probably not so great on the Trio because the phases are not so great there. But on the Supreme, for example, uh, on the Strix, I actually have this BIOS on my Strix and it does better than this Kingpin. So, you know, I mean, I guess on LN2, this would probably be the card to get because you can get the unlimited BIOS if you submit your serial number and then you can, you know, it'll void your warranty, but then you can give it as much juice with the classified tool as you want. Um, I know there are some posts about power draw issues. I have no power problem hitting the 520. Uh, I'm not getting power capped until 520 if I use the classified tool, 
or if I use specific loads to get it up to 500. Otherwise, it will not pull 520 watts. Um, third, lastly, my radiator came with bent fins. Uh, also not a good look for two grand, but it is what it is. Um, so I got a few 3090s in this past two weeks. Uh, I would say the most impressive one is, I'm gonna show you guys real quick. So let me just pause right here and grab that. All right, this is the probably the most surprising and impressive 3090 I've gotten to date. Uh, this is the uh, MSI Supreme X. Um, if you just look at the unboxing, it's very similar to the Extreme, where it's nicely done uh, right here. Even the little, you know, little touches like this for the removal. Makes you feel like spent a lot of money. You know, you guys get some good stuff. You get a mouse pad. There is an um, anti-static bag. I took it out already. But you get a GPU stand since these things are heavy. Um, but I just want to show you guys this, uh, what MSI has done here. This thing is big. And it's the same size as the Trio, right? So it's, it's a huge cooler. And if you can see the... You can see it's pretty, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell on camera here, but it's a very beefy heatsink. And you can see for the VRMs here, there's another beefy heatsink at the bottom. Um, the back plate, so nicely done, pure metal. Uh, this part lights up RGB. I will show the RGB from the front and the top, and the, and this top side. Um, I have it plugged in my test bench, so I will give you guys a quick look at it. Uh, this lights up and has a very Lian Yi SL120 fan look, so it matches those fans really nicely. Uh, this part also lights up. Uh, in terms of the clocking on this one, I flashed the Kingpin BIOS onto it because why not, right? So with that said, it doesn't matter if you're going to buy an 80 or you're going to buy a 90. Get the cheapest 3.8 pin, right? So, okay, probably not the Trio <laughs> for the 90, but for the 80, you know, get a trio. I see all these people trying to trade trios for tufts, and it's kind of like you're doing it wrong, right? Because you want to have the highest power limit 3080 because these are power hungry cards. So the higher your power limit, the more performance you can squeeze out. So if you're trading, I see so many trades all day on discords for trios, giving it up for tufts, FEs, like why are you, I understand if the card doesn't fit in your case, but why are you downgrading yourself and often offering money to do so? Is take a Strix BIOS, a Ford Win 3 BIOS, or in this case, a Supreme BIOS, if you have a Trio, and flash it onto your 80, and guess what? You have the same power limit with a better cooler than you would with the Ford Win 3 or Strix. Because the Trio cooler is better than the Strix cooler, and it's better than the Ford Win 3 cooler. It's pretty much this cooler with, you know, just a little bit, bit Instead of this nice brushed aluminum look, um, you know, this actually might be, you know, it's like plasticky, but also metal feeling. It's kind of weird. Um, nice diamond cut look. But here, I'll just show you guys. Uh, let me grab it real quick. This is the Strix. This is the Strix 90, right? So I've had a couple of these now. Um, this one's pretty golden, so I'm keeping that. I know there's a white one, but I don't really care, you know. If you if you want to get the white Strix, you have to remember, if you're blocking it, like a lot of enthusiasts would, it's still a black PCB. So if you block a white Strix, it's going to look like a black Strix blocked. Um, so I don't know what's the benefit in that for water coolers. But uh, if you're into white, there is a white Strix now. Um, my opinion, white plastic looks cheap. I've seen that card. My friend has one. It looks cheap. So I wouldn't spend the extra 50 for it, but you know, to each their own. Oh yeah, oops, main point here. If you look at this heatsink, all right, you can tell it's not as beefy as this heatsink right here. See, it's pretty obvious just by looking at it. This is a larger heatsink. And not only that, it goes to another plate here that then does, let's see. No, nope, actually, no, nope, never mind. But yeah, this is a beefier heatsink. This is a better heatsink. And the Trio has pretty much the same heatsink, just a different cover. So when people are going, oh yeah, I want to trade for the Strix, I want to trade for the Foot of Wind 3, you know, you're really just shafting yourself. I mean, you just, just take a look at it. All right? So 
MSI has really, in my opinion, did an amazing job with this card. I mean, look at that back plate. It's nice and metal. This part lights up. Super nice. I mean, the trio back plate isn't that nice. I give you that, but... And the Ventus back plate is trash. That thing's plastic. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at it. So, I think aesthetically, this is a better looking card. And if it was my money, uh, this is actually, the 90 is actually $30 more than the Supreme, right? At least... Uh, micro center it is. Um, on Newegg, they might be the same price. I got two of these. One from Newegg, one from... Oh, actually, no. They were both from Newegg. I forgot. But anyways. Um, yeah. So this is probably the most surprising 90. This one's really good, actually. I got pretty high clock sizes. I got 2100 stable. Amazingly, both of these 90s here clock higher than that kingpin. So... <laughs> It is what it is. That just tells you that cards aren't binned. Just like I said in the other video, nobody sits there and bins your dies. None of that. So you just paying for the cooler, you're paying for the looks. So, sometimes you're paying for the PCB, and sometimes you're not. And that's it. Um, but in terms of real world usage, uh, same FPS across all three, one or two, negligent. Um, I did remember that in a previous video I talked about blocking these. Uh, I did block the 80 one already, and someone had asked about the height here, this height, and I believe it's 142 millimeters. I don't, no, that's not right. Okay. Never mind. Um, I will be blocking this one with the EVGA, uh, oops, sorry, with the Strix block from uh, EK. Uh, I'll do a video on it just so people can tell how to tear these down. It's not actually not, it's pretty easy. Hmm, just a couple screws. Um, but I'm waiting on the back plate for that. So once that comes in, I have the block, but I don't have the back plate. You know, so once that comes in, I will tear this down and block it. And I might actually even block it before I get the back plate. But other than that, uh, just a quick talk about a few 80s that came in. Um, yeah, ever since I got the kingpin, I had a lot of people ask me, um, is it worth it? Will, you know, will spending the extra money give me the extra frame rate? The answer is no, you're just spending extra money. Um, you're not gonna get, this is a one to five FPS difference between the 80, right? So if you buy a Kingpin, it becomes a, if you're lucky with the silicone lottery, one to six, right? It's kind of a pointless endeavor. Like I said, the Kingpin should only be for people who are going to do off ambient cooling. That's it. If you're buying it for anything else, there's nothing wrong with buying it because you like the way it looks or you whatever, but don't buy it for the performance because that's not there. And that's pretty much it. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Later.